In essence, a bond is simply an IOU, where the borrower, called the issuer, borrows money from a lender, the investor. So a company needs to borrow £500 million. It therefore issues a bond. Investors buy the bond, thereby loaning money to the issuer. Governments, public entities and companies typically issue bonds. And as a financial instrument, they have been around for millennia. The main reason why an issuer will choose to issue a bond rather than borrow the money directly from a bank is that the amount the issuer needs to borrow is larger than the amount they could borrow from a single bank. So the issuer borrows the money by issuing a bond. With a bond, multiple investors each lend the issuer a fraction of the total issued amount. Also, for many large corporates, it makes sense to borrow directly from investors instead of a bank. It's both cheaper and more efficient. A key difference between an IOU between two individuals and a bond is that the bond is transferable and has some standardised definitions and terminologies. These enable the bond to be traded easily between investors after it's been issued. If you take out a mortgage, you pay interest to the bank on top of your loan amount. And borrowing money by issuing a bond also doesn't come free. The issuer will pay interest on the bond, also known as the coupon, at fixed intervals to the investor. Furthermore, a bond also has a date at which the amount borrowed will be paid back to the investor. This date is known as the maturity date. Many companies that issue bonds have also issued stocks, also known as shares. A key difference between stocks and bonds is that bonds are debt, whereas stocks are equity. The implications of this difference are as follows. As a bond investor, you become a creditor to the issuer. This means that you would have a higher claim on the issuer's assets than stockholders would. So, in case of bankruptcy, the bondholders would receive payment before the stockholders. Because bondholders are simply creditors to the issuer, they don't have voting rights, unlike stockholders. Neither do bondholders have the right to receive any dividends paid by the issuer to the stockholders. Bondholders are in a better position than the stockholders in case of bankruptcy, but they don't have the upside potential that stockholders have in the event that the issuer performs better than expected by the market. These include being able to sell the stock at a higher price than it was bought for and being able to receive dividends from the issuer. Even though bondholders are in a better position relative to stockholders, the price of a bond is also influenced by the credit worthiness of the issuer. If the credit worthiness of the issuer goes up, then the price of the issued bonds will, everything else being equal, also go up. If the credit worthiness goes down, the price will go down. We take a closer look at credit worthiness in another course. Several terms and definitions are commonly used in bond trading. So let's take a look at what the various terms actually mean. As we know, a bond is a debt investment in which an investor lends money to an entity that borrows the funds for a defined period of time at an interest rate paid at predefined intervals. So who issues them? The issuer is the entity that borrows the money by issuing a bond. Issuers are typically divided into categories that are defined by their governance structure. These are supranationals, for example, the World Bank and the European Development Bank. Governments, for example, Germany, Brazil and Russia. Municipalities, for example, the city of Buenos Aires. Corporations, for example, Gazprom, Volkswagen and Petrobras. Banks, such as Deutsche Bank and Citigroup. The investor is the person or entity buying the bond. He or she pays a price when buying the bond 
and receives interest at predefined intervals. If the investor holds the bond until it expires, they'll also receive the invested nominal value at maturity. The bond principle is also referred to as the face value or par value. It's the amount that the investor will get back when the bond matures. Typically, bonds are issued with a minimum total principal amount of 250 million euros or dollars. The most frequent issued amount is between 250 and 750 million euros or dollars. But some large corporations have issued bonds with a principal amount of 2 billion euros or dollars. Interest is also known as the coupon. This term defines the rate of interest that's paid on the bond by the borrower. The most common types of interest are fixed or floating. A bond with a fixed coupon pays the same rate of interest throughout its life at fixed intervals, typically once a year or semi-annually. A bond with a floating coupon typically pays a fixed rate of interest that is on top of a benchmark interest rate. So, for example, the three-month LIBOR rate. As a result, the coupon is set to be paid at predefined intervals, for example, every three or six months. The yield to maturity expresses the return that the investor gets on the bond investment if it's held to maturity. It's shown as a percentage. The yield to maturity equals all the interest payments the investor will receive plus any gain or loss between the price the bond was bought at and the repayment price, which is usually 100. The formula assumes that the investor will reinvest future coupon payments at the same rate as the current yield on the bond. Now note that the yield of a bond is inverse to its price. So as bond prices rise, bond yields fall. And we'll discuss this in more detail in another course. Repayment, also known as the instalment of the bond, can be made in various ways. The most commonly used is the bullet type repayment, which applies to 90% of all issued bonds. With bullet type bonds, the principal is paid back in one amount at maturity. Bonds are either traded via an exchange or over the counter, which is also known as OTC. Bonds are usually listed on an exchange, but unlike equities, their liquidity is poor, so the trading is done OTC. In a later chapter, we'll take a closer look at how bonds are traded OTC. So let's summarise what you've learned. Bonds are debt instruments, where the issuer borrows money from the investor who buys the bond. The issuer pays the investor interest, also known as a coupon, for borrowing the money. The coupon is typically paid annually or semi-annually and can be fixed for the entire life of the bond, or it can float, meaning that the amount of the coupon varies. There are various types of issuers, ranging from supranationals to corporations. The total amount of a bond issued is called the principal. In 90% of all cases, this is repaid in one amount at the maturity date in a bullet type repayment. The investor's return on the bond is termed the yield to maturity. It defines the total return in percentage terms that the investor earns on the investment if they hold it to maturity. Now this is not to be confused with the interest or coupon paid on the bond. The coupon is the agreed interest paid at predefined intervals on the bond by the issuer.